All right, Doc here. Now what we're going to do is dig into this uh, grid base layout and turn it into a fluid layout. Um, what I've got up here is a demonstration of the 960 grid system. The 960 grid system, as you recall, is based off of a uh, 960 pixel grid uh, that is, uh, at that width, it's, it's considered a fixed width. So uh, 960 is div divisible by uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, uh, 12, etc., uh, 16, and so on and so on. And so it, it gives a lot of flexibility for how many columns can be in here. Now to understand this column system, the way that it works is that each of these columns is a uh, allocated width for containing content. Each of these columns contains, um, depending upon what system you're in, like this is a 12 column grid, uh, this page that I'm on, and this page that I'm on is linked to from D2L. Um, it's at 960.gs and it's the demo uh, .html site. So uh, you can access this by going to the uh, 960.gs website. And uh, this, there's all the information you need about this grid system. But what we're looking at right now is this uh, 12 column grid system. And we could do the 16 column, but just to keep things simple for now, we're going to look at the 12 column grid. So what this allows us in this case is 12 grids or 12 columns. Each column has got a gutter on each side so that there is a gutter on the outside and there's a, a gutter in the middle. Now for a 12 column based on the 960 grid, if it's a fixed grid, uh, each column is 60 pixels wide and then the space there's 10 pixels on each side. So if you count the uh, the gutter, the column, and the gutter on both the so the gutters on both sides. Then you've got an 80 pixel column, it, including the the content area and the gutter. And so um, if you go all the way across the screen, now again it's based on 960 pixels, but uh, if you're only putting the content on the columns and leaving the gutter on each side as uh, clear space then the maximum that you can use is 940. So if you're using 12 columns, uh, the width of that is 12 times 80 minus, which would be 960, uh, minus the 10 on each side, minus 20, so that's 940. The same thing here, one, got, one column is 60. Two columns is 140. Why 140? Because we have 80 times two, 160 minus the 10, 10 pixel gutter and the 10 pixel gutter. So that, that works the whole way out um, of how that how you're going to uh, manage the math on this. And this website that we're looking at uh, is uh, a demonstration site of that. And the there's the URL right there. Uh, of where I'm looking at this. And this is a really helpful tool to, to have sort of off on the side when you start doing the other things that we're going to do today. Okay, so let's go on to the next thing. Uh, what I've got here is I have, um, using that same website, uh, what I have done is I have gone to, and let me go ahead and bring it back in here. I've gone to this website, the 960 grid system, and I'll get rid of the demo, but I'm within that page there. I go to here, and what I'm going to find is that there's a lot of resources here for people who are trying to use this, uh, the grid system that, that they're outlining there. And what I have done is there are a lot of downloads that you can use and the most of those are through github although there's a lot of resources in here if you're really getting into this uh, 12 column thing and what I did is I went to the templates and I got I'm gonna be working in Visio so I got a Visio uh, template of the um, 960 grid system and that's what I have in front of me here we're looking at uh, Visio and I've got that template up in front of me and let's take a look at what is in that template. First off, um, there's both the 12 column 
and the 16 column grid systems that are in there. So you can choose which one you're going to want to work from uh, and the resources there. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be demonstrating the 12 column grid and um, so we'll, we'll do some different um, exercises as part of this lab that will get you familiar with using that 12 column grid and then what we're going to do is we're going to change it so that rather than using pixels we are going to use percentages so uh, whereas uh, the 960 grid system works predominantly in pixels it is capable of doing fluid and that's what we're going to do so first we're going to set up a, a grid based on pixels then we're going to convert it to a fluid system because that's what we're working with um, when we're doing a responsive grid so the first step in moving to a fluid grid system is you still have to understand the ratio the relationship of the uh, size of the space that you have to work with with the size of the space that you want to use uh, for instance um, what I've done is I've used that uh, Visio template and created this document to give you a little bit of additional information and I've set into it some uh, different uh, elements that would just kind of simulate mocking up a web page and so you'll see that I have my 12 grids there uh, you can see it in the pink in the background and what I have done, and I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it better, is I have gone ahead and I have put some structure in here um, so that uh, looking at it, you will see that I've created a div that goes around the whole thing. So I've got sort of a, a box, a wrapper is what I call it. I've got a header, I've got nav, and then I've got some instructions down in here that, that could have been used to create a website. But uh, the purpose of this document is to uh, help you to understand how this works so what I've got here is I've created a div called wrapper which goes around the entire uh, site here uh, and so if I was um, let me explain the way that this is working and I'll come down here for it the way that I've done the coding here is that I have listed in the first instance the HTML code in the second instance I've listed the CSS code then I've listed what the width would be if it's a fixed width and then I've list the way that it would be for a fluid width and uh, let's go into that so around the whole thing I would have an, a div ID of wrapper okay so um, that's the way that I would code that in the HTML in the CSS if I was writing rules to address this I would do pound wrapper because it is a um, a div with the ID of wrapper uh, the width on this was 900 pix 960 pixels because I was going uh, the full width and so the width is 100 percent that's pretty easy to uh, understand why that's 100 percent but let's look at what we need to do in order to get that and so I'm not gonna read all of this to you the the content is available for you to uh, to read but um, the math works based upon the context uh, of whatever you're trying to code so in this case I'm trying to code the wrapper the only thing the wrapper sits inside the, is the body and so it's got the full access so if I'm building off of a site that I would want to be 960 pixels wide then uh, and that's what we're doing in this lesson uh, what we're gonna do is uh, use that 960 uh, pixel standard and what we need to do is we need to understand the mathematical equation of uh, how you come up with these numbers the mathematical equation that we use is target divided by the contact context equals the result so in this case because the target size is 960 pixels and I am pulling from a a grid system that is 660 pixels my math would be 960 divided by 960 equals 1 actually it would be um, 1% 100 uh, percent uh, and the way that we do that is um, by shifting the decimals by two points uh, in order to get the per percentage so the 960 divided by 960 equals 1 you shift it by two decimal points to uh, get the percentage because you're uh, 
uh, adding that uh, divided by 100 thing, and you've got 100%. Um, 1.0 equals 100%. So our width would equal 100%. So if we come back and look at this section here, what we've got is we've got a width of 960 pixels out of 100, 960 pixels, and that gives us a width of 100%. So uh, when we switch to fluid grids, we would uh, make the width 100%. If we were using a fixed width, we would use 960 pixels. And that really is the trick to moving from a fixed width page to a, um, a flexible width page. So let's look moving further on uh, we've got the header here and we're using the HTML semantic markup for a header we're not doing a div ID equals header because in HTML5 we don't have to do that the way to call that out in the CSS would simply be header because it is a element now uh, if we were doing it based on a width of 940 pixels then going to the math the context is still 960 because we're still looking at using the entire width of the page so for this header since it goes from uh, one side to the other it sits inside the wrapper but the wrapper is at 960 uh, so then what we've got is 940 pixels width divided by 960 pixels in the target so that are the context so the target is 940 pixels the context is 960 and then that gives us this number right here 0 0.979 etc to make it a percentage we shift it and that gives us this entire equation now you might ask why not round it well let the browser do that the the more accurate the percentages that you give it are the better so just give it the the full uh, number that is given there so in this case it would be again the width would be 97.916667 percent and that's what you would be working off of so that's going to give that 97 percent of the width of the entire page because it's 940 pixels out of 960 now as we move down we go to the nav and nav again is one of the new semantic um, elements that you can use in HTML5 when you call it since it is an element it would be nav in the CSS if you are giving it a fixed width it would be 780 pixels but again let's go down to the math and understand why um, the width is 780 pixels the way that we got that first off is that I'm going across 10 columns 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we got the 10 columns times 80 pixels because that's how wide a column and the gutters on each side is minus the 10 pixels on each side so we've got 800 minus those 20 that gives us 780 pixels and this just lists the way that we came to that math uh, so that is our target 780 pixels but then when you come in and look at the context it's 940 now why is it 940 whereas it's been 960 before the reason it's 940 is because we're looking at what it where is this document object in relation to its parent document object and that parent document object is 940 pixels because the nav is inside the header if the nav had been sitting below the header then the context would have been 960 but because it's sitting inside that um, header section that is 940 pixels or the equivalent thereof then what we need to do is we need to change our context to 940 now if we had another element in here that was say a, a link within the nav or a group of links then we would have to go to our target however wide we wanted that thing divided by the context which would be 780 so you always have to look at how much of the um, the parent element are you wanting to use not how much of the page but how much of the parent element whatever that parent element would be the parent element in the case of wrapper is the body tag 
So that would be 100%. The, the parent tag of the header happens to be the wrapper, which is at 960 pixels. So it's uh, 940 divided by 960. But when we shift down, this one is 780 pixels divided by 940 to get that 82% of not the entire page, but 82% of the uh, 940 pixels. That is crucial for you to understand as we move forward. Uh, the, the further you get into it, the more complicated it's going to be. And while for Dreamweaver, it will do some of this for you, when you start getting into nested um, elements inside of elements or divs inside of elements or divs inside of divs, it doesn't keep that context for you. So even if you're using the, the Dreamweaver template that will do the, the grid system, uh, you're still going to have to understand how to do this math. And what I've found is a good habit to get into is to take and put that um, the math that you're doing in as a comment when you're giving something a width. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What I've brought up is the KevinWTharp.com website. And if I go into the code and, and specifically go into the CSS, so what you see is I'm looking at the, the CSS for this document right now. And what you'll see is I have gone in and I've done some commenting here. So uh, the first thing that you'll notice, let's just look at the main body, uh, is that there's a div with an ID of main body. It's floating left, and then I've given it a width of 58.95 da 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 percent. And where did I get that number from? Well, that's what I put this comment in here. So I took and I put uh, within comments, and that's what this tag that's an opening comment and that's a closing comment tag and so everything in between that is a comment and so what I did is I inserted the comment there to tell you where this number came from 566 divided by 960 so if this was based on a 960 pixel grid system um, I wanted that main body to take up 566 of those pixels and I put that comment in there uh, so that I could see what I had been doing that math for. And as you'll see, you can also use it for, for instance, when we start defining font sizes. Um, we'll be talking about EMs. An EM is considered 16 pixels at a 960 uh, grid. Well, if I wanted it to be 24 pixels, um, the, size, the equivalent of 24 pixels, then I would have to do 24 pixels divided by 16 pixels to get 1.5 EMs. And so using that commenting in that way is good to do uh, just so that it helps you to keep track. Now you'll notice that I had put in a comment that uh, this was uh, 566 divided by 960. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, that um, let me change the size here uh, this is a fluid grid that we're looking at and so as I reduce the size of this viewport down these things are adjusting in their sizes because I use the percentages and not the pixels um, then that's what allows us to do that and that's what we're going to be learning about as we go forward so to summarize this section of the video uh, we're basing it off of in this case a 12 column grid system in a 12 column grid you have 12 columns with or 12 uh, yeah 12 columns in the grid each with 10 pixels on each side and 60 pixels for the content uh, and what we are able to do is by using the mathematical equation of target divided by context equals result we are able to get what the uh, percentage will need to be to convert it from a pixel based width to a percentage based width and in the process we will change our structure of that page from being a fixed width to a fluid width thus turning it into a fluid grid layout.